Every year, huge numbers of people visit the war cemeteries of Flanders, Normandy and other overseas battle sites to pay their respects to the service men and women who fell during two world wars. But this isn't one of them. Brookwood Military Cemetery, near Woking in Surrey, is the largest Commonwealth War Cemetery in the United Kingdom. Set alongside a vast civilian burial site, it is the final resting place for thousands of military personnel from Australia, Canada, India, New Zealand, South Africa, as well as the UK and Ireland. Located near a train line, it met the need for the many casualties of the First World War who died in London, and it was later extended during the Second World War. Brookwood Military Cemetery came about as a portion of Brookwood Civilian Cemetery and in 1917 the first service personnel of the British Empire were buried here and now we have over 8,000 members of British and Empire Commonwealth units commemorated here at this site. About 5,000 of them are buried and uh, more than 3,000 of them are named on two memorials here. As you may hear, there's a train line. Uh, you may hear trains in the background, and that's because this is on the main line to London, which is why a cemetery was built here to start with. It's a very convenient way of dealing with bodies that you need to bring in from town and bury them from a special station that was built just for that. Brookwood honours all fallen military personnel. In vast plots across its 37 acres lie sailors, soldiers, Air Force men and women lost in numerous conflicts from Flanders to Afghanistan. And they range from nationality to age. From Chelsea pensioners to a 15-year-old South African soldier who died of influenza. Maintained by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, its white headstones are laid out in straight rows representing soldiers on parade. And its horticultural design and flower schemes, recalling an English garden, follow established principles found across the Commission's cemeteries. It is our paramount concern that the sites we maintain are beautiful, fitting, permanent resting places and places for reflection for the people who died, but really for those who come still to remember them today, whether they knew them personally or not. So the plants we use in front of the headstone are called anti-splash plants. It's not a botanical name, it's a, a name given because when the rain hits the headstone, the rain bounces off the headstone, it hits the border, the dirt in the border. That then will splash back up onto the headstone. The placing of dot plants are placed every eight headstones. So if we start with this one, this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, repeated. Not all the dead have headstones. Opened by the Queen in 1958, the Brookwood Memorial commemorates the men and women who died during the Second World War and have no known grave. Some were members of SOE, the Special Operations Executive, and their names are carved on panels of green slate. One of the members of the SOE that we commemorate by name here in Brookwood is a woman called Violette Zabo. She chose very bravely to volunteer with the SOE and to go into France to do secret agent work. She went on one mission, was very successful, she came home, they asked her to go again, she agreed to go again. This is in the aftermath of the June landings in 1944 and unfortunately on that mission she was uh, taken prisoner. She was uh, tortured, she was in captivity for months and they murdered her at a concentration camp in January 1945, thinking that they would erase all trace of her from the world. But because of our memorial, they have not. Within the grounds lies the Brookwood American Cemetery and Memorial. Its First World War graves and Chapel of the Messing are managed by the American Battle Monuments Commission. I can understand coming from the outside and you look at what we do and how we maintain the site. And you do come to us and say, why? Why not? These men and women had a short life. And in that short span of life, they gave us something which is beautiful. They gave us our liberty, our freedom. I'm not trying to thump my chest over the story, but it's, it's the least you can do for them is take care of them and remember what they did.
This marble is the same marble that was used in the quarries with the same ones used by Michelangelo. Uh, his Pieta, his, his, uh, his David, uh, it's just fascinating. Uh, it's easy to work with, so it was easy to engrave, sturdy, stable, durability, and uh, you can cut into it without damaging. Uh, the, the, and it's not inexpensive, but then it doesn't really matter what the price is. What matters is the honor for the guys that are here. So you want to give them the best. And in many cases, cut out is considered the best there is. Located nearby are French, Polish, Belgian, and Italian sections, as well as a plot for Czech RAF crews lost in several crashes over the United Kingdom. For me personally, um, when you come to somewhere like Brookwood, which is so beautiful and so peaceful, what astounds me is how young these men were, how far away from home they were, how passionate they were to fight for freedom for their families, and that the fear that they faced every day going up in those planes or in those bombers, um, you know, at such a young age, I can't imagine it. It's, it's incredible and I, I respect and admire them enormously, but I also give thanks for the peace that I stand in here because it's down to what they did that allows me to do that. During the Cold War, exiled soldiers from Eastern Europe were often neglected by their home countries, but now their achievements can be recalled with pride. Their stories were actually wiped out of history books and wiped out of the records and they're only now coming to find out about the veterans so we're working hard in Slovakia and Czech Republic to tell the story there not just here in the UK. During the Second World War when playing the last post was banned by the Germans at the Ypres Menin Gate Memorial the event was taken up at Brookwood and has continued ever since. I will shortly recite the Kaddish the traditional Jewish prayer in memory of the departed. El male rachamim, God who art full of mercy. The word mercy being the same in Hebrew and Arabic, it's rather nice. Yes, koret nishmatot, remember the souls. Today's service is multi-faith, as are the many sailors, soldiers, airmen and women buried in Brookwood. We have a number of different faiths come along uh, and, and it's, just, it's just basically saying that when it comes to war dead, it crosses all divides, whether it's religion, colour, creed, everything. And, and it's, it's so important for us to hold this multi-faith ceremony, ensuring that people know that it wasn't just white people that were in wars. There was a lot of Commonwealth soldiers from different religions that, that were fought in the wars um, made, you know, for the Allies and lost their lives. Today, new groups of pilgrims are discovering this site and are coming to pay their respects. Three friends from the West Country have encouraged other bikers to visit. A few of us got together and we just essentially thought we wanted to do a bit of an event for bikers to pay a bit of respect and to remember um, our, our servicemen and women. Um, we're very conscious the bikers do a lot for charity and do a lot of fundraising and we thought wouldn't it be nice just to have a free event that's just about paying respect. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. You just don't know what to expect until you've actually sort of walked around it and as I say it just brings out all sorts of emotions. It's a huge respect. I work in a school, and to have a 15-year-old South African that died, albeit not in in being killed in the war, but having been serving at 15, that's younger than some of the kids I've got at my school. So it really did kind of strike a chord. And yeah, I'm not an emotional guy, but tear to the eye kind of kind of moment. Brookwood Military Cemetery is notable for its peacefulness and tranquility, but it has sometimes been overlooked. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission hopes that more people will remember the many thousands who rest here in England and recall their courage and sacrifice. Is remembrance going to drop off slowly? Do people need to be more aware of this place? Do they need to come here and visit? Yes, it's a fascinating place and, uh, and these guys that you can you, you see out here, um, you know, they gave their lives for us and uh, 
they'll be here tomorrow and uh, they're here every day sadly and uh, you know we need to come and pay our respects. For the Commonwealth War Graves Commission we exist to remember but I would say we do this on behalf of society, of everybody and really we exist so that they can remember, so that they can come to our sites um, and see the men and women that we commemorate and do the work of remembering themselves.